left right here first. Okay. Good morning, everybody. It's Danny Wanda back uh, from over here at Pecan Grove. Uh, guys, uh, I want to tell you something that we found out. Um, don't believe everything that you read in the stores. Don't believe a lot of stuff. I'm just being honest. We bought... Y'all have seen the shishito pepper here that we've talked about and we've shown here in the garden. It is very prolific. It is making tons of peppers. It looks beautiful. And you look on here. It says shishito sweet pepper. Okay? And it shows red ones and shows green ones all on it. Well, the other day, Wanda made some rice and uh, she mixed some peppers all in it and everything for me. And uh, I took a bite out of it. And I'm going to tell you something. I was set on fire from my mouth to my belly. Now, I used to love hot stuff. But I got where I was very intolerant to it. And so we don't plant any hot peppers anymore. And I asked one day, I said, what in the heck did you do to my rice? And she said, I didn't do nothing. I said, they is something that's so freaking hot that I can't even stand it. And I said, here, take a bite of it. Well, she took a bite of it. Wasn't well, nothing. She said, dang, that's not hot. And, of course, I was already on fire so bad from all the way down my esophagus. I took the next bite, and it didn't seem like it was hot. And I kept taking a few bites. It wasn't hot. I said, I know. I just eat something that's cooking me all the way down to my stomach. And then I took another bite, and it done the same exact thing again. And I told her, I said, something something you put in that rice is screaming hot. She said, I just got our peppers. We ain't planting out the sweet peppers. And I said, well, I don't know what it is, but I'm telling you, something is hot. So we kind of let it go. And a day or so later, Wanda was, we picked some more peppers, and she was chopping them up. And uh, she picked up one of the shishito peppers that was green, bit it. It was nice. But she reached over and bit into one of them that was turning red, and it lit her up. And she said, oh, my word, there's the culprit. Well, what we've noticed, our banana peppers and our uh, bell peppers, one just made me some like little, they call them uh, pepper boats. She cuts the tops off of them and fills them with rice and stuff, some and stuff. I told her, I said, one of that bell peppers, it's got a little bit of heat in it. And... I said, it ain't supposed to have. And the banana peppers, I was eating one of them fresh, and it was just, it had that little tinge of heat in it. So I said, time to do some research. So we started doing some research. Well, when you plant a hot pepper next to a sweet peppers, the sweet peppers will take on the heat. Maybe not to the extent that the hot is, but it will take on some of the heat. And I said, but the shishito says it's a sweet pepper. So we looked up the shishito pepper, and down in the writing about the shishito pepper, it says that about 1 in 10 will be hot. Well, we've got a little bit more than 1 in 10 because we've tested a bunch of them and there's a lot more than 1 in 10 hot. So we don't eat hot peppers no more. So today... And this plant's covered. It's covered. Guys, I'm it talking. Makes, it makes me sick. I'm going to keep the big peppers because I've got some hot peppers that I've, I'm saving that I've got chopped up for whoever might want some peppers. Yeah, but it's making me sick that we've spent this much time taking care of a plant and we're not going to keep it. I mean, it's just, it, it makes me sad that they lied. You know what I well, mean? Well, technically, if we'd have researched it. But we didn't. We just bought a plant well, that said, says sweet pepper. It said sweet pepper. There should have been an explanation of sweet pepper with some hot. <laughs> it just it, it just it frustrates you when you spend as much time as we did into taking care of this thing. And then have to get rid of it. And then we have to just pull it up. Because see, these are some nice peppers. I mean, look at this. This thing is loaded. And I'm going to keep the peppers. I'm not getting rid of the peppers. Some of them are falling off as I pull it up. But I guess that'll just become a cucumber trellis. Yes. Um, but, I mean, you look at that. It is loaded 
And there was no electric culture with this no, one. This it no, this had no. It just loads up. It, it, just, a, it just loads up. I mean, it, and that should have been a that should have been a warning to me because most of your hot peppers, they just load up. They're not like my bell pepper that's sweet down there. We got about four or five off of it right up in the front uh, when we first planted it. Big old, beautiful, quarter-inch thick bell peppers. And that's been a week ago. And it's just now blooming and putting on new peppers again. So The sweet peppers is making good. Now the, the, uh, the bananas. And the peppers has really ramped There's up. a few little ones. Danny's done picked off most yeah. of them. The but cukes now, are starting have, again. It does have electroculture with it. Yeah. And look at the cucumbers. We've been, we're going to have to show them the whole harvest here in just a little while. We were actually out here in the garden and Wanda goes, I don't want to film nothing. I'm so tired of filming. And I told her, I said, Wanda, we got to pull this sushito up. we got to explain why, you know, and because so many people will do just what we did. They'll go to the store and they'll look at this and it says sweet pepper and they'll buy a sweet pepper, seeing the red ones and the green ones and thinking, oh, I can have a sweet pepper that's got the red in it, like a bell pepper will turn red, purple, you know, yellow, orange, and they're still sweet. We thought the shishito would do that. Well, lesson learned. It don't always work like the thing says it does. You need to do your research on it. We didn't, we didn't do it. Well, guys, we was out here in the Danny corn, and I was just kind of looking out here at it, and I saw this beautiful ear sitting here, and I told Wanda, I said, look at this. This is what you have to contend with in the deep south. Watch this here. Fire ants. Look at them come boiling up out of that corn. I mean... Are you going to pull that one? No, I ain't going to pull it, but I mean... Will they ruin the kernels? Yeah, they're, they're just eating the, they're eating the top of the corn out. I mean, they got a... It, what it is, it's so dry here, it ain't been raining. And this corn is... I mean, I'm telling you when, you, when you're standing here, all you smell is just corn. I mean, and it's just... And this is field corn. It's, it's, yes, not sweet corn. It's field corn. But dent corn. Look at, uh, look at this ear here. I've never had my corn do this, but uh, look at this. It's way over here. It comes way up here, and it comes way over here, and it drops all the way back to the stalk over here. Look at that. The heavier that ear gets, it just keeps sinking down, you know? I'm like, I've never had my corn do that before. It usually uh, stays up. It usually stays upright. And what we've noticed, we've got a field of um, GMO corn close. You see how our leaves do? how they come up and yeah. they flip down and you see from a distance you can tell our leaves are curved and coming down Ours come up like this and they go way out there's a field up here on the guy just planted uh his little corn's up about this tall um it's we're been not, about a month ago we're not we're not worried about it cross pollinating because his is way away from pollination stage uh but all the leaves are sticking straight up on it like this and they're just upright like that all the way up and it looks like pioneer or something like that uh, but it doesn't even resemble anything close to what we have here, you know. And, no. And that's one reason we try to get ours in so early is because these people who sell this corn, they sell them to the local people around here who raise cows and stuff and deer plots and things like that. And they don't even realize that they're planting stuff that is harmful to everything. I mean, literally, but it is harmful. For the most part, this is what ours looks like. It comes from the stalk and goes up, stays yeah. that way. I mean, it's just one... There's a lot of corn in here, guys. Yeah. I mean, a whole so lot So if of a corn. ants get a few, we're okay. Yeah, I'm not we planted about enough for everybody, Everybody hopefully. was, oh, you need to spray it. I am not spraying my corn. I have never sprayed my corn. I don't plan on spraying my corn. And it is what it, it is, is and what it is. we I get mean, enough to eat, we get enough, and yeah, if we get some seed, y'all get some. If we get enough seed to sell, we'll have seed to sell, or we'll, whatever but, the ants get into and mess up, we'll, uh, we'll let the chickens have that, or we'll grind it up for the cows, or whatever, and um, that's, uh, you know, I'll tell you what I am looking for, if any of y'all own one, I, I'll tell you what I am looking for, I'm looking for an old-fashioned hammer mill that goes on the back of a tractor, runs by the PTO, or runs off of a belt so that I can grind my corn for my cows and my chickens. And, and it has a chute thing that comes up and shoots it into a bag. I've been looking for one of those. I haven't found one anywhere that's within distance of me to be able to go. I'm not driving five or six hours away from here to get one. I mean, I'm just, I'm looking for one uh, to use for cattle feed. We're also, not only are we looking for a hammer mill, now, there's there's a difference. We're looking for a hammer mill for the chicken feed and everything. 
I'm looking for an old-fashioned grist mill, one that's got the stones. Now, I found a bunch of them that's got the steel burr, the steel plates that grind it, uh, and that's okay, but it doesn't do the job that stone ground is. I'm looking for a grist mill, and I don't care if it's a 10-inch or 12-inch or whatever. Uh, I'm looking for one that I can do our corn flour, grits, and cornmeal and all that with. Uh, I am looking at some companies that... Uh, that handle them they're just really really expensive and we're trying to justify actually purchasing a grist mill versus um, yeah purchasing a grist mill you know versus just using the old chinese one we got with the flail things in it um now it will do it but it doesn't come out as fine as we would like uh for the uh for eating so we are looking for that. If you know anyone in South Mississippi or somewhere down in this area right here that possibly has one that they, old family heirloom that they wanted to get rid of or something, uh, we are interested in that also. But um, finishing on with the garden, I want to show you our tomatoes. Now they are finally starting to turn a little bit. We've been getting one or two along. Yeah. And I've had some sandwiches and stuff. But I want to show you something. The plants right are still looking good with the electroculture. Yes. Look at this. Look at that. And see, it's almost smooth across here. Now see if you can, because I've had other Here's people say. Right here. Look right here. These are, look how pointed. Other it's people have plant. said, yeah, other people said theirs was doing the same thing. They were getting pointed and flat on the same plant yeah now let's look are we got any more we're gonna pick off of here no that one ain't quite there in it. <laughs> this is the little one guys look at this look at look at some of these things they are like softball size if we had rain yeah, i'm afraid i don't know if it'd bust them if we started raining or anything yeah if we water them too much we, them we too get much. What rain at least once a week though yeah we've been getting a little bit okay uh, now this is the one without electroculture the plant's yep. not as pretty no, it's not as pretty. Hold that one upside the tomatoes. Now we have oh. one or two. We got a couple, but, but they're, they're still, still smaller. They're way, way, way smaller than that one is. I mean, these are on this plant. Like, I mean, they're like way littler than this one. You know, um, all of them. Every, they, ain't a, they ain't a tomato and on this plant. And that's the smaller one over there on the yeah, other one. This is the small one on the other one. That's the funny thing about it. Uh, we did. Uh, we did have a couple of tomato worms get on them. You know, it ain't like it keeps the tomato yeah, worms it off. Got you can see where they ate the tops of the plants off here a little bit before we caught them. Um, now this one right here. Could take it. Uh, it's not quite red. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take it. I'm going to show you what we're talking about. And the size. Oh, yeah. The size is just definitely different. Uh this is so, side the sun hits on this one. Electroculture, no non electroculture. Electro this one's smooth. This one's pointed. So we've shown on both plants, it has the same. Yeah. So all these were celebrities bought in town. We yeah. bought a couple look, of look plants. Laying right here. Oh, we forgot. We that thing's laying right there on that leaf the whole time. And that's electroculture. Yeah, this only electroculture plant. Look at it. But see how pretty. This plant. Look at it. It is still blooming. Now, this is supposed to be a determinant. It said on the thing it was a determinant, and it is still putting on tomatoes. Got little bitty tomatoes. Little tomatoes and it's still blooming. Do you want to take that other one, or you going to leave I'm it? I'm going to leave it. Okay. I'm going to leave it. Let it get a little bit more. Um, yeah, but the, this is the electroculture one. This is the non-electroculture one. And they're within five foot of each other. They get taken care of exactly the same. I haven't watered this one. I haven't watered this one. Um, I did fertilize them here a while back, and I fertilized this one. They haven't been back. fertilized in almost two weeks. About two weeks, yeah. It's time to do it again. I will say that. But this is what I mean. You, you got to see the difference, guys. Look at that. That's just it's unreal. It's unreal at the difference. I mean, some of them tomatoes are probably five inches across. It looks like. And Is they're still, <laughs> they're still going. Still going. And these over here are nothing near what these are. And they all, everything is treated the same. Look at this eggplant. Now this is the eggplant 
that we were going to give up on. Look at it. Look at it. It's got the electrical. People said they couldn't see the rods. Okay. Okay. There it is right there. It's been in the soil the whole time. It's tarnished and everything. It looks horrible. But when but we were harvesting spaghetti, they said, oh, you didn't show it. Yeah, I did, at, but it wasn't up close. Look how this plant's over three feet high. And this plant was struggling just to live. It was a little old tiny plant, not two inches high. Went through two freezes and... Yep everything and now look at it and we were about ready to just we just gave up on it until we stuck the spring by it now these we done harvested oh, these but we're going to show you in the ranger here in just a minute what we got off of them this is like this is like weeks. crazy okay this little one we got, we one, got one off, off of this of, little one and one off of that little one up there and one here i uh i got two tomatoes off of this one one of them had was laying up against the uh rod there by the ground and it started uh, to rot on me there. I think we might can get a little good out of it. This is one of the tomatoes off of it. Now this one's pointed. This one looks a lot like that one. And this come out of the this greenhouse. This come out of the greenhouse from the worm castings. And uh, probably celebrity we think. I think it was a celebrity. But all of these. They're kind of pointed. Kind of that one is this one's not so we've got um, we're gonna have fried green tomatoes um this one is flat so we got some flat some pointed just like the celebrities yep like the other celebrities are so this is my other one uh with the electroculture that i have they need um, water and this has got the antennas that i made these are homemade antennas i put on a fiberglass rod uh, they're sticking up this one here is the same way they're starting to put on some tomatoes now, but they just haven't had any water. We don't have a well right here anywhere near. I mean, if we water this, we have to tote water. But here's the little plant that I had was going to, uh, <laughs> I was going to give up on. We tied it up. It's got another little tomato on it right here. This is a mystery tomato too. Okay, here's some of the round zucchinis. Uh, we went and harvested some of them off of the plants. And we got tomatoes, cucumbers, and we're starting to get a little okra, some white and jambalaya. Okay, a lot of y'all in the videos have seen the pineapples here. Uh, we took, these were babies we took out of the high tunnel over yonder, or the greenhouse. And Ms. Wanda brought them over here and trimmed all the side leaves off of them so that the middles would start coming out on them. Plus they went and, to two freezes. I had yeah, to cover them with buckets. They were covered up with the buckets, is correct. Now, I got a lot of grass. We got to go over here and do some hoeing around them. But we are getting them going. And we thought we had one here that was uh, doing pretty good. So we put an electroculture by. Wanda did. She stuck one by it. I'm she hoping said, for a pineapple. She said, I want a pineapple this year. So I'm going to put an electroculture on the big one. You know? And how many do we have in the greenhouse? Oh, gosh. We got four big old ones in the greenhouse right now. So we are... Uh, this plant must have died. That's the one that died. Only okay. one died, so and that's good. we have good. all of these here. It's coming along. Now, these are kind of small. We haven't fertilized them. I'll say that. We haven't went through... Oh, no, I did fertilize them once. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay. I know I haven't. They've been fertilized one time. But look at the peas, guys. The pink-eyed purple hull peas. Look at this. They all have blooms on them. They, they have, have bees working them, too. Little peas everywhere. I mean, look at this. Look at all the little peas on here. There's peas everywhere. Probably been a week. We'll bees. be picking. Bees are going everywhere. Yeah, lots of bees. All right, guys, we're finding here, we, we fixing to have to do some aphid control. Look at this. It's ever four, five, six plants. Look at that. Look at the aphids. This heat we're having is just unreal down here. And them things, we we planted out of the cycle. That's That was one of the issues we were concerned about. To see how long it would take them. So they're yeah. blooming, and it's, they finally found them. But most of them have no aphids. No, but them things will spread like wildfire. But one plant, like right there by you. Yeah, I know. I ain't going to be able to get them all. And then the most of them have none. So. We're going to have to come up with a. A solution. A solution to come through here and do something with them. 
we usually plant about three weeks from now and these we planted early and we got in the cycle i hate that but uh you know so what is maybe... usually an aphid control for this oh spray with a light soapy water spray them with a light soapy water but we don't i mean we don't have to get a water hose out here from somewhere it means we got to run a lot of water hose a long distance uh to get out here or i'm gonna just have to do some looking you know i've got a sprayer out. we've got a pump up sprayer we may have to find a solution to put on this i'm not putting any chemicals uh we're gonna have to come up with a solution and it can't be something that'll mess with the bees because the right. bees are everywhere right now There's bees everywhere they hit at the absolute wrong time yeah all right this so is the thing about new property see this is a new property for us and we don't know anything about it uh, got to figure the cycles out. Yeah, I got to figure out the cycles here. I mean, that's you got another thing. corn hanging down. See, it's getting so weighted. Yeah, it's just some of those ears over there that big around. I mean, this big they're old beautiful. Ear. Now these, I want to talk. These are the uh, muskmelons that we got from uh, Melissa from Homestead, Homestead Mama. Homestead Mama years ago, and I decided to come in here and plant. Them. I got to get in here and do some fertilizing and some hoeing. But they're all up. Yep, they're all coming up. Every one of them came up. And we did no electroculture on any no, of this. We didn't. Okay, guys, this is my Cherokee tans. It got rooted here before I realized it. I'm trying to turn it back up into the corn and get it going. Um, here's one here. I got to get it turned around before it roots. Get it headed back into the corn. We've got some uh, more of them up here. We're just needing water real bad. We need some rain. This one's got turned, I got it turned into the corn. Now, this one's not doing a whole lot. When you, I got out past where I actually plowed the garden and uh, the ground's probably just not broke up right here. I need to bring a broad fork over, I reckon. Now this one is going wild. It's done took off. It's done doing its thing. I try to keep it. It's all the way over here. Is I mean, it's yeah. actually the best one we've gotten. I'm trying to get it running down the rows. So, like, one works and one doesn't. I mean, I don't... Well, it's, it's just didn't get broke up at the end of the row. If you look at the how... This one's way back there where I plowed it deep. This one's at the end of the row where it's probably still just hard here. Okay, we got a... Some of our cocozels here. These are ones we really gave up on. Didn't think that they was ever going to do anything. They were really late, even. Yeah, these are ones growing. Was one to planted. And... I think I planted twice here, and this was all under water during one of our rains. It this was. is a low spot, and it was all under water. And I said, "Well, these aren't going to do." But we've done harvested some cocozels off of them. And so, yeah, I got a real big one off one of these the other day that we didn't even know was here. But the rest of them... Need to go a little ways. Yeah, they've been underwater. Here just the other day it come a hard rain and this part goes underwater. So it, these went back underwater again. And this is the back side of the corn. Yeah. Okay, guys, these are the old-fashioned multiplying onions we got planted down through here. Um... They're okay right now. When we first put them out, it got to be 108, 110 heat index. And, boy, they suffered right there in the beginning. Uh, but it's rained a couple of times. And yeah. Then... And this ground still got a little moisture in it right here. So we're good to go, I think. I think they'll start rooting because it looks like they're... Uh, they're greening to... up a little. Yeah, I see a few cypress vines coming up in here. And then the garlic. The garlic is actually was ready to pick here a while back, but we just left it. Because uh, we've got plenty from deep south. We'll just let this stay in the ground. It won't hurt it. And come back from, you know, next time. Okay, guys, we've got to get out of here. It's a uh, quarter after eight, and the heat is already almost unbearable. Um, you can see the corn in the background. We The thing that's bothering us is we have a potential hurricane coming in a week or two. And, uh, you know, that's... That's always a scary part when you live in the deep south. When you got such a pretty crop of corn and you have a storm lurking on the horizon like that, 
we don't ever wish anybody any bad luck, but I hope it don't come here, you know. Um, but we did, I guess the main point of today, when it comes to your peppers, we learned a lesson this year. Uh, you need to do a little research on them before you actually put them out. Just because it says they're sweet peppers don't mean that they're always going to be sweet. That little clause in the Shishito 1 in 10, don't get it because that 1 in 10 has heated up all my sweet peppers through yonder just a little bit and takes away from the beauty and the joy of enjoying the different flavors, you know, because anything hot, to me, it destroys the flavor of anything. So we don't really care for it. Um, that was the whole thing of the video today. We were actually picking and decided we were actually waiting to show a video. And I told Wanda, I said, we better tell them why we're pulling up the shishito pepper. So guys, and after we got to doing that, we just kept the camera rolling while we went through the garden. So, uh, we enjoy you. We appreciate you. And I do hope that, uh, I hope you all have a good garden this year because really it's going to be necessary. And, you know, Follow us along. We'll show you what works and what doesn't work. I mean, you know, the electric culture on the uh, spaghetti squash. I can't say that I was a big fan of it on the vining stuff that actually puts roots in the ground everywhere. Um, and I'm not sure that it worked that well with them, but individual plants that just root right there where it's at, it worked out. It was working really good for us. And a lot of y'all have sent us emails, pictures, comments. Uh, talking about thanking us for showing you that. Y'all tried it, and it's blowing your stuff out of the water. Literally, your your plants are producing more than they've ever produced. Bigger plants, healthier plants, no insects. Now, I can't say that because we got insects, but uh, it's a new property for us. We don't, this first year we've ever planted here. So we don't know what's here until we actually try. And this was new ground. Uh, where this garden is was, was woods, and trees and we just had them all took up with a track hoe you go back and look at our videos you can see that and we came in and flat broke it plowed it showed all that in videos lime the ground uh, not as much as we needed to we did half the lime in the spring we're gonna do half of it this fall and then we've been trying to put the right amount of fertilizer but no matter what we do if there's no rain you can't make anything happen you can water it all you want it's just not the same as rain electroculture is not magic okay it doesn't it's not a cure-all for everything you still have to have fertilization you still got to have rain rain you still got to have sunshine you have to have all these elements as it pulls the, uh, the the currents out of the atmosphere and puts it back into the soil you got to have something in that soil for it to take out and because this was woods the timber in here had sucked everything out of the ground there was actually nothing left, you know, hardly in the ground. It was high in phosphorus. That's the one thing that our soil sample showed was high in phosphorus, low in lime, uh, low in potassium, you know, low in the potash, uh, low in zinc, all that kind of stuff. And it told us how much to add back and we're actively trying to get that to the point that we need. So guys, thank you once again for staying here and following us. And I pray that we can be a blessing to you and show you the techniques that we're using Maybe they'll work where you're at. And, and if they do, I'm happy for you. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.